Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 936. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Today, it's the return of the much-loved segment. This is interesting. This is interesting where we look at news stories that you'll find interesting. Plus, we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster. Here's Haley. Hi. Do you have a Pinterest account? Mike's Daily Podcast. Um, something, something that rhymes with Pinterest account. I'm account. Mike's Daily Podcast. Dracula. I missed the total eclipse of the moon last evening. Get going. But I did hear the Bonnie Tyler song and sang it out loud. I was screaming. Turned out. Turn around, bright eyes. I can't wait to hear what Wiz Khalifa's eating. I can't. That Wiz Khalifa song is on every station, often repeating. Wait, what? That song. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's been a long day till I see you again. That one. Mike's That's a Wiz Daily Cle- It's not Wiz Khalifa? Podcast. I'm not sure. Oh. Yeah! It's. I guess it's now crossed over to the adult contemporary charts. And it was in that yes. Vin Diesel movie, uh, the one with the, the cars. And Vin Diesel's in good shape. That's true. Ted Cruz, not so much. He should eat a grape. He only eats cake. Pancake, chocolate cake, Texas Frito pie cake. He's from Texas. He's a portly fellow who needs Christian so badly to get elected president. Unfortunately for him, atheists love to vote. And that's not potted up. How's it going, Haley? <laughs> I watch him just like grab his mouse and frantically try to click <laughs> at his soundboard that he's so excited by. Uh, but nothing was happening. So you heard my rant about. Oh, boards. definitely. Uh, it was. Uh, see, there's certain sound banks that can work at a lower volume. Or at a higher volume, I suppose. Like the, I like the way you say that. But in general, when you're using the, like the, and stuff like that, when you have your other, you, you, everyone speaking, um, you have to make sure that if you want your sound effects up that loud, for this specific board and this setup and the way they're recorded in the system, they can't, no one can be speaking while you do the sound effects, or else you can't hear them. So, it, after almost 30 years, I still don't know boards. Well, the digital boards have actually changed uh, from the analog boards and the, the digital sound systems. I want this sound effect. We have the Price is Right fail horn. Uh, is it on this thing? Probably. I don't know, but it's in the library. Oh, okay. If we ran into the other studio and did it, but it's not in this one. Yeah, but it wouldn't come into this studio. We can just we do this. <laughs> Amazing. And then, what's this? Oh. It's one of those cups that you turn upside down. <laughs> those are cool. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for explaining that. Mm-hmm. I hope, uh, I hope I, my, uh, complete, uh, uh, Generation X tirade didn't offend your millennial, uh, Soundness. No, it was beautiful. Uh, that was a Friday show, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that show. I noticed that um, out of all the topics that you talked about, you had to mention me at least once for each of them. I did. You've mm-hmm. become an integral part of the show. Yeah, I counted six separate instances of me being mentioned in that episode. So. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now wait a minute. I remember now the last show, yesterday's show, you were mentioned because of the photo. That your girlfriend made. Yes. And Floyd wants a copy of that. Yes, I will work on getting that to you. But no matter what, Haley, I think we both agree that we hate baby boomers. And here's mm-hmm. the biggest baby boomer we hate the most. Oh, I thought that said Rush Limbaugh last <laughs> shot. <laughs> what? I thought Rush Limbaugh was going to walk in. All right, well, I'll do an impression of Rush Limbaugh. My friends, this is Rush Limbaugh. I'm fat. Oops, I should bleep that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, I left a mark to bleep that. 
how was your weekend? <laughs> that was pretty good. I was listening to your podcast about the uh, watching the, the super moon blood moon eclipse while uh, not watching the super moon blood moon eclipse because there was clouds in the way and yeah. it made me sad. Oh, now, I just posted on my Facebook, somebody posted from the Griffith Park Observatory, like, a bunch of different people's filming of the of the eclipse. So. Yeah, I did get to see the later part of it, because the clouds did go away once it got darker. So, um, once it reached its apex and started uh, waning, as the terms are. Oh, oh, good. Yeah, so I did get to see some of the red, my girlfriend and I. I was at work, and the building faces the other direction. Ooh. I guess I should have gone outside. But, dude, I was so freaked out by that video you showed me a couple weeks ago of the girl that died in the hotel Cecil? Cecil Cecil Hotel, yeah. Cecil Hotel. Yeah. That was, I guess, in 2013. Yeah. And she checked into the hotel. Well, you told me the whole story. Yeah, and yeah. Because, actually, you were inspired by... I was watching a Rob Thomas' video. This is how a heart breaks, and he's in a elevator, and you're yeah. like, oh, that's like that video where that girl died. I'm well, like, what? It's, it's become like a really big sort of... I've seen a lot of references to that in, in popular culture. Like, that video, they did an entire episode of the Castle. The... the, the with the, uh, uh, Fillin? With, they, na- with Nathan Na- Fillin. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, they did an entire episode based off of that same thing. I have to watch that. Yeah, it was really it was really cool. Obviously, they actually figured it out and everything, and it was different uh, uh, because it wasn't a great unsolved mystery in there because it wouldn't be a good crime show if they said we don't know basically what's the story of, so, of not the nate fillin show but of the actual story all right so the story is this lady who we can't remember the name of because yeah she, we we can't she was a canadian uh tourist uh-huh. or i guess there were some rumors about why she was really here because she's checked into this hotel it's has sort of a notorious reputation, not only for like some creepy stuff going on, like there was some murderers that actually uh, stayed at that hotel, and there was some murders that happened at a hotel. But there was also, you know, like it's famous for like prostitutes and stuff were able to stay there for long periods of time. But um, so she's staying at this hotel, and she's there for a couple days. And she disappears, completely disappears. It becomes like a news scandal thing because she's gone. She's no one knows where she is, and she's found like what is it? Like two weeks later, when they finally found two weeks later, find yes, her, yes, they find her at the hotel on the roof in a water tank with her clothes floating next to her and no sign of physical trauma on the body. Now, the unusual part about this is the water tank is sealed off, and they have to cut into it to get her body out. There was an opening that was 16 inches yeah, wide. Yeah, 16 inches wide. Which is, how big is that? Is it's that, like, it's like a foot and then four inches. Well, she was tiny, though. She was small, but they had to cut a piece out to get the body out. Yeah. Which maybe there was some swelling from the water. But, so the water tank was on the roof, and then it was only accessible by maintenance, and it was very difficult to get to. Like, you needed a key, and I think a ladder, you had to bring your own ladder, things like that. What? Yeah. And no no sign that anything had been tampered with, anything had been picked. Um, And that, that in itself is really weird. That they have no idea how she got up there, how she got in the water tank or anything. But the real mystery comes from this video. The last uh, yes. the last time she was seen... That's freaking me out. ...was a it. security cam video of the elevator in this hotel. And it's, what, it's like four minutes long? Something like that? Uh, yeah, it, it goes on. It's like, we've seen it's longer like, footages where after she leaves, the, the door keeps opening and closing. Opening and closing, opening and closing. And nobody's but, there. So she's like in the elevator, and she's peeking out of the elevator, and she's backing into the corner. And yeah. And she's like pressing a bunch of buttons. Yeah. But she keeps the elevator door open. Yeah. And then it looks like she's beckoning or talking to someone in the hallway. Yeah, and her arms are doing this weird thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, but she's off to the side. She's off to the side. And her face, when you look at her face, it's so just blank. Yeah. There's like nothing there. Like, not fear, not... It's just sort it, of nothing. Blank. Yeah. It's just like... It just is. It's, it's not even like a board or I'm going... I'm just doing something. It is a blank slate. 
And 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 it is weird because the other thing that I watched where the guy was kind of narrating what was going on, he said that possibly she was trying to hit all those buttons to to get the elevator door to shut, mm-hmm. but it wouldn't shut. Mm-hmm. And then so she kept peeking out, and then when she leaves finally, mm-hmm. it shuts. It shuts and then it opens again. And yeah, it shuts. and it, then you never see her. Yeah. The, the thing is about that is. Uh, because the, the the security camera is in the elevator, there's a possibility that when it's opening and closing the doors, uh. because she pressed all these buttons, it's going to different floors, and we can't oh. really tell because the elevator, the security camera is stuck in the elevator. Yeah. So we can't really tell if it's on any different floor. True. But that doesn't make the whole pressing all the buttons and her going in and out and looking around less creepy. And is there other security cameras in the hotel that are catching her at the other angles that we're not seeing her? No. As far as we know, that was the only footage and the last footage. As far as was released, and that's what they say. That's the only footage they have. Then apparently, shortly after this, this is when she went up, made her way up to the roof, mm-hmm. supposedly, mm-hmm. got into the, the tank and, mm-hmm. and died. Yes. I, my and she wasn't discovered until they checked the water tank because their guests were complaining of horrible water pressure. Yeah, and, and weird tasting water, too. Which is creepy. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that they even... I, I heard in that one news report that we watched, the guy's like, uh, they, so the hazmat crew says they don't have to do anything to the water. It's fine. Like, they didn't do anything to clean it out. I'm Which, like, yeah. who would stay in that hotel and drink their water? Disgusting. Yeah. But, uh, gosh... How did she get up there? First off, maybe there was a door left open. Maybe she was on some sort of drugs. She looked kind of weird in the video. Mm -hmm. Or a ghost grabbed her, shoved her in the thing, and that's it. That seems more likely. That's the most plausible. Because Ed Ramirez, or whatever his name was, uh, I want to say Ed Ramirez, was Steve Ramirez. No? That's a friend of mine. Uh, Whoever was the night stalker lived in that hotel for a while. Yes, yes. I think it was Ed. So there's all kinds of weird uh, stuff going on in that. Very suspicious. Mojo. Uh, anyway, that th- so that haunted me, especially because yesterday I was working in a building that had an elevator. Mm-hmm. Like, th- like the building we work at in Fremont, mm-hmm. which we have to go three floors. The one in the other station I work at goes up five floors. Mm-hmm. So... I was. I just watched that video. It was freaking me out, and I got into the elevator, and I'm like, maybe she's gonna pop out. She's the elevator ghost now. Anyway, we uh, before working at this specific building, um, I worked in a haunted building. You did? Yeah. Before the radio station moved here, it was haunted. We would hear like footsteps in the hallway and stuff all the time. Really? Yep. Weird. Yep. That's Doctor Who. That's not creepy. Oh. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, the last episode was pretty good. The first one sucked. The, the second one was it was a two-parter, as you know, Steve Moffat loves to do. Yeah. And they kind of resolved some stuff. But once again, he didn't do a reboot, a reset button like we hate Steve Moffat for. Mm-hmm. But he did do um, he ex- <sighs> some of his theories you know explaining how things are happening you're yeah. like okay you've really made me suspend my disbelief again you're Thanks, really phoning it in this time Steve like sherlock Moffitt. when sherlock jumped off the building and he survived and yeah. all that we've had that conversation before so there to- was a better explanation for that in the book which like he didn't even plan it oh in, in, in the uh, original, in the real, in the he original, jumped off a building. In he Sherlock? didn't jump off a building, in the building? but Sherlock um, like he ju- he plunges to the bottom of a cliff with Moriarty, kind of like in um, the Robert Downey Jr. version of the movie. Oh, I don't, know, I don't know if you've seen the end of that. No, is that it's the like the part- second. I think it's the second one. Game I of Shadows. I haven't seen the second one yet. Yeah, um, at the end, like, like. It's they, they, heavily implied that they go that they both go plunging down into the uh, into a giant cliff. Oh. But, um, but uh, he survived. Ar- Arthur Conan Doyle uh, hated writing Sherlock. Hated oh. the character. Was so done with the Sherlock character, and so killed him off. 
and got so much fan mail that he was forced to bring him back. Oh, so he had to explain it somehow. Yeah, yeah. And it worked. It worked. It was a good, it was a good book. How'd they explain it? Uh, basically, he kind of faked the whole thing to take the heat off of him. Oh. Uh. And it was like, like, it was vague enough, the death scene was vague enough that it did work perfectly fine. Well, I will have to read that someday. You should also read the one where the Mormons did everything. There's a f- evil Mormons Sherlock Holmes book? Oh, believe you me, there is definitely an evil Mormon Sherlock Holmes book. I'm reading book. that one first. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's like three chapters that is like, this murder happened. Sherlock, tell us about how it happened. And Murlocks, and Sherlock's like, hmm, well, let's see here. And then it cuts to this like, Half of the book is just about how the Mormons. And then it goes back to Sherlock going like, Aha! See? It was the Mormons. <laughs> no, it's funny. There, that- there's a point where there's this, there's this guy and this small child like in the uh, Utah Badlands. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, really? In yeah. Sherlock Holmes? Yes, yes. And they're like hiding in a cave from the sun. And the Mormons come by, and they knock on the cave door, and they go, Hi, uh, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? No, that didn't happen. I'm not making this up. That's not word for word, but they were definitely chilling in a cave, and the Mormons came by, and were like, What's up? I, maybe Sir Arthur Conan Doyle had an experience with Mormons that he didn't like. He must have, because it was like... Secret society type stuff Wow Oh by the way In my pod Castro Valley newspaper I was looking at things to do And they have like a little calendar And there was something that said something about An Illuminati Like an, a meeting of the Illuminati And I looked at it and it was like uh, This is a program to help uh, With uh, t- Teaching Young adults Skills in the world I'm like, okay. That makes sense. So, anyway, I thought that was um, a thing from the Da Vinci Code. What, Illuminati? Yeah. No, that's from real life. Did you know Ron Howard made his makes his movies? He's inspired by a photo. And that what is what inspires him to make the movie. Like Apollo 13, he saw a something about like the moon, spaceship. Space. Yeah. Space. And then just made a movie. And in, like, Arrested Development, he saw some goofy picture of, like, uh, probably Jason Bateman. Did you know that one of the Arrested Developments, Jason Bateman thinks he's meeting his uh, long-lost sister? And it was actually Justine Bateman, his real-life sister from the TV show uh, Family Ties. But in the the episode, uh, she's thinking that... Because she's a prostitute, she's thinking he's coming on to. He, she doesn't know he, they're related, uh, and so they play the whole scene, even though they're in real life brother and sister, mm-hmm. like um, they're coming on to each other. But there's not like a love scene that doesn't get that weird. Oh, I'm glad. But that was a funny. It's in the uh, third season of Arrested Development for all Noted. you people that want to That's see that. That's the one on Netflix, right? Yeah, all of them are on Netflix now. Okay. Well, no, I meant the one that was Netflix. The one only. that was just on Netflix is is season four. Oh, it was not the one that was only on Netflix. That's the one. That's it. Okay. All right. So Mike'sDailyPodcast.com is the website, and we got a link to Amazon, which Haley says doesn't work. I say does. I haven't checked it, but uh, Becca did buy something off of it. So if you haven't gotten any money, it doesn't work. Becca! (laughs) The greatest artist in the world. (laughs) Love her stuff. Tell her to keep drawing things and of of, uh, my characters in strange sexual positions. I will. (laughs) I know uh, someday I'll commission her to get all the characters together. She's got her drawing pen in one hand and the Kama Sutra in the other. That's a fun girlfriend, everybody. <laughs> Wee! I like a cartoonist, Kama Sutra girls. My thing. Those are two of my favorite qualities. So she's gonna that? hate me for saying that. <laughs> no, we're joking, Becca. It's not true. Uh, but you know, it's good to have. Um, uh, you know, actually, the Kama Sutra has. Uh, you know, if you want to like draw the f- human form, yeah, there's a lot of 
sort of shapes and such. Compromising positions. I have a friend named Robert who is an artiste, and he's actually kind of uh, religious in a Christian sort of way. Mm -hmm. Constantly invites me out to Berkeley to go draw um, naked people. And I've never gone, I went once because he kept bugging me about it. I finally went and he keeps telling me, oh, the women are really beautiful. Oh my gosh, you're going to draw a beautiful naked woman. I get there. It is a naked male. Right. Uh, I was like, I don't want to stare directly at it. Mm -hmm. And, but I'll draw the rest of them. Would you ever nude model? Did I ever nude model? Would you ever nude model? And did you ever nude model? Can I, I wear a bear suit while I'm nude modeling? No. Dang it. I have to be bear. You have to be wear ba- your bear, bear birthday bear, suit. Bear bud. I don't think I'm, I'm uh, that much of an exhibitionist. I'll yip mm-hmm. yap all day on my podcast, but... Yeah. I can't bear my, my flesh. <laughs> Just got uncomfortable between us, Haley. <laughs> Would you would you bear all Haley? I might. Good for you. D- depends if I was getting paid. You're comfortable and you're confident, and that's good. I'm not, but I do it anyway. <laughs> Probably if I was getting paid. I think you're inspiring me. Thanks. I have an interesting story in our news thing about uh, snark attack. Why Snarknado too is chumming the waters of social media. But dun, first, dun, dun. us. Check us out on TuneIn, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, Podomatic, and Mary Stream Live. All those places. Mm-hmm. Facebook, Tumblr, Yelp, and Twitter. Tweet, tweet. You tweet. have do you have that sound effect? I the, do, right? The here? Twitter sound effect. I do in the thing. I don't see it on the uh, I don't know if it's in the array, but it's in the It's system. not in the this one here. I know it's on yours for the Rob Black show. You should make your own. I'm gonna make my own. Um, oh, but none of the characters came in. They're all going to come in and f- shuffle through really quickly right now as soon as I see who's coming in. Oh, okay. Stampede! Hi, Mark. Hi, Haley. How y'all doing? I'm Benita the Rodeo Queen. I'm the disgruntled fiddle player. Tell you what. What? I was not allowed to talk at all on today's show, but I did bring my cow. Thank you so much. Oh, look who else just walked in. Hello, Mark. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. And I want to cut you off, because you were talking bad about me last show. And I will uh, f- you guys up. Oh, we better bleep that. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> we better bleep that. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, anyways, new show. This is interesting. Wow, this is interesting. The fishy gonna get you. Oh, the big, big fishy. Coming around the cove with this mean old chumpers. When the fishy make a slash, everybody dead. Cause no one wants to be the fishy's dinner. Hey, fishy. You're ruining the party, man. Chasing up all the girls. Well, that was a song that had something to do with sharks. Because it's a snark attack. This according to Time Magazine. Um, I should know songs about sharks, but I don't. Did you see? Did you see Sharknado? No. It's it's good. It's not. Oh, what is it? All right, I'm gonna read that. This is by James Poniewozik. You have not seen? Oh, you have seen Sharknado. I have seen Sharknado. Uh, I own uh, Sharknado. And it's good. Is no. it like campy or stupid? It's or? campy and stupid. Yeah, my favorite is the guy who just fights with a bar stool. He gets eaten. Oh, aw. Mm-hmm. That's too bad, because he sounds like a fun, worthwhile character. Uh, he's Irish and racist. <laughs> sounds like a jerk. <laughs> I think he's Irish. He's like the standard guy at the bar type stereotype. Oh, okay. Like, that's why he has his stool, because he just takes it with him. <laughs> <laughs> when all the sharks start pouring in. You should always leave your stool behind, because it's disgusting. Uh... This says in this article, I've been, I've seen Sharknado 2, the second one, but I cannot properly review it. That's because I watched the Sci-Fi Channel movie, the sequel to last summer's viral hit about killer fish flying in a killer storm, on a review disc in advance in my office, alone like a loser. I have seen Snar- Sharknado 2, the movie, in other words, but I have not had Sharknado 2, the experience. That experience, when the movie aired on 
airs on July 30th. I don't know what he's saying. Will involve watching in a crowded room or better with limitless friends on social media. I have never heard you say so many words and not actually say anything. This is badly written, this article. Uh, oh, it's talking about uh, how the sound of music. <laughs> <laughs> Why all of a sudden it's talking about the sound of music? The hills are alive with the sound of... Oh my god, sharks! Oh, I, I meant the article on the other side of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Religion for Atheists. It's a book that Alan de Botton wrote. He argues that religion should be understood as an explanation of the origins of the world and the afterlife as much as a set of rituals and social practices. Did that make any sense? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know why it isn't. It should be. It, it kind of is. A number of atheists are against the idea of an atheist church, including Bill Maher, possibly the country's best-known non-believer. Quote, mm -hmm. it undermines the whole point of atheism. Wait, yeah. How do you do... Can you do a Bill Maher impression? Wait. It undermines... I can't do... It kind of... You know how he talks? No. And neither do I. Okay, go, <laughs> go ahead. You were going to say something. So that sort of... It undermines the whole point of atheism, and it also undermines the whole point of religion. Um, because there's there's being against religion, and there's being an asshat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, explain asshat. So, it's a hat, just... <laughs> <laughs> but it's made out of ass? Just made of ass. Oh, okay. So, so some people... In other words, they're, they're atheists, but they haven't really thought through why they're atheists. So, atheism... So, so going back to what that article said of uh, religion should be considered um, uh, a system of, like, used to explain the origins of the world, blah, 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 blah. I say to that, get ready to press F8. No <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> All right, I hit F8. Okay. I had um, to do that three times today. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. We censor like, duh. ourselves. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah. And atheism is the belief that all of these ways to explain the uh, origins of Earth and everything and all of these uh, religious practices and things don't work and should be stopped or shouldn't be bothered with because they there's no point to them anyway. But the whole concept of a religion of atheism is just, just, just science. It's just friggin' science. Like, it's not the opposite of religion because uh, religions can incorporate science. Uh, atheism is not the opposite of religion. Ah. Uh, it is... An anti-religion thing in uh, most cases, some cases, but it is not the opposite of religion, and it should right. not be another to make an atheistic, quote unquote, church. Uh huh. Is dumb. Kind of, right. It's dumb, and it's just you being an asshat. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. It's sort of saying. F you religion. I'm better than you. I'm going to do my own thing. And you can't stop me. And I'm going to get tax benefits. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's sort of like saying we're going to try and do everything churches do. Right. Except we're just going to... Science. Haley, I think we've... Uh, I think this is a better topic than the Sharknado thing. I think so. Or maybe the mixture of the two is good. What about a Sharknado thing? NATO, like a, like a, uh, a union of countries yes. that are against sharks. Or no, just using sharks for the defense oh, of okay. their nations. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last story, because I know we got to go. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with uh, religion in a different context. Revival has now begun. On the United States. Ben Carson. 
The retired neurosurgeon and surging 2016 Republican candidate offered another controversial stance about Islam in America yesterday, saying that he's open to considering religion as probable cause for searches. When asked on ABC's This Week he, if he would listen to arguments from people advocating that one's religion could provide probable cause to search the emails and calls of Syrian refugees being let into the U.S., Carson answered in the affirmative. He said, I personally don't feel that way, but I would certainly be willing to listen to somebody who had evidence to the contrary. Uh, so basically like um, that. Who's that girl? Oh, look, it's Ginger from Gilligan's Island. Yay. I got distracted. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, that's the big controversy that uh, Jay Sekulow was talking about on his show. For those of you who didn't know, but no, actually, everyone listening to this has no idea who Jay Sekulow is. Live from Washington, D.C., it's Jay Sekulow. He is a guy who has made a bunch of money. In law, he's a lawyer. and By being very angry. Angry. He has picked up causes to help defend uh, Christian liberties, quote unquote. We need you to come down to Washington and sign this petition. Yes. Because right now, they are feeding non-Christian snacks (laughs) to our elementary school children. So, if you have found something in the Bible that completely supports whatever crazy ass belief you have, ass hat belief you have, <laughs> then Jay Seculo will go and defend it for you and make you a lot of money. With a petition. Exactly. Yeah. And, and now he's all about Ben Carson. Ben Carson should be allowed to say that all Muslims need to leave America and 